Hello everybody and welcome, and yes we do have a new couch co-op game in the form of an ARPG, it's called Chaos Bane, we're going to have a very close look at it today. Torn asunder by civil war, and racked by famine and plague. What does ARPG stand for? It stands for Action Role Playing Game, and this is very much in the vein of Diablo, and you're probably aware of the new Diablo 4 announcement. This is essentially a dungeon hack and slash top down almost where you're looking at leveling your character choosing different character types there's actually four in this game i think you've got the mage and you've got the uh, range of course with the archer the slayer which is the close quarters stuff and of course the empire soldier so this is set in the warhammer universe it's not 40k so it's old school warhammer if you like more lord of the rings than star wars this doesn't really detract anything from the lore for me i'm a big fan of both of those uh, canons so it looks very good doesn't it it's playstation pro uh, centric it does include some enhancements back of the box symbol all that sort of stuff but nothing major in the options menu. The game is retailing at full price. This is a full price AAA game and it came out about three weeks ago. It was also out in multi-platform, out on the PC as well, but I didn't clock that it was actually full-blown couch co-op. It's four-player couch co-op and this has got two-player on it, this particular video. I will look into how the four-player works, but I'm interested because recently we had Borderlands 3, which was probably one of the most famous split-screen games on the platform and it didn't really perform very well. It, they kind of didn't really take us guys into consideration. That is not the case with Chaos Bane. Chaos Bane is a brilliant, brilliant couch co-op game. I'm going to say that to you now, spoilers. But this is a full, wholehearted attempt at making a very good ARPG that directly competes with Diablo 3. Like, I'm serious, it really does. The enemies, the sheer busyness of the game, and the clever hotkey system and loot system is just as strong as the Blizzard Classic. So the setup is that player one sets up a quest and player one has their stats and their level etc. Player one can then have player two join them in the game in real time, whenever, as long as you're not in close combat or it might even be when you're in the hub. But my point is that it's drop in, drop out where you don't have to restart anything. Someone can come in the room, pick up the pad, push the options button and join your game. Now, but this person does need to have a PlayStation Network account, not to play offline, okay, but to have a profile because you will be given all your own stats. You'll be essentially playing a full blown single player experience alongside your couch co-op body, which I love a borderlands does that very well one of the games that missed the bat on that one is the inquisitor warhammer inquisitor game where your co-op partner really didn't have their own in-game stats they were just attack on they were just tagging along this game no fully fledged everything you get to play two games alongside each other essentially now the camera works quite well, you can't move it around, but one of the things that is done beautifully is enables you to access your infantry completely not hindering the other player. So you can see that your stats and stuff, they don't take up the whole screen and it's also done the fly. And a stroke of genius is that when you're looking at your infantry, i.e. when you're idle and your other player is walking around, you'll automatically follow them. That's such a good thing because if the other guy wants to get on, they want to keep moving but the person keeps looking at a pair of shin pads and working out whether 2.3 percent is you can just crack on and they tag along and of course they come out of their infantry as and when they're ready i've included this bit of footage because i do actually like the macabreness of the game it's very gory they've handled chaos extremely well it's such a deep rich lore subject matter for the warhammer series the chaos marines and the chaos monsters are some of the best in the whole of the canon and lore i love fighting them I love seeing and hearing all their grotesque <laughs> movements and noises. Set pieces and environments, I think, are probably the game's strongest area. They haven't held back on making the opening sewer levels and some of the open air levels look so detailed on the rock and the formations and the interior architecture, this aged, dank look that they've given the whole game itself. I wanted to experiment on sort of how the hub works as well and how all the interactivity works with the various vendors, etc. if there's two of you. Well, the answer is it works just the same as it does in-game, 
where if you go to a merchant or trader, yes, you do get your own little screen to deal with that merchant and trader with. That's such a great idea. This game's really taken on board the fact that if someone else is in and out of their infantry menus during a couch co-op experience, it completely hinders the other player's experience. This game has taken that on board. It's totally dealt with it. It's an ARPG that I just have so much fun playing. The fun doesn't stop and start every time you find a new piece of cool loot. Diablo was a bit guilty of that. You had to just keep looking at that wheel and keep going in and out. With this, it's, it's very slick, very quick. Now have a look at the bottom of the screen and you can see that we've got the hotkey slots here. Uh, the other player is not as high rank as me, so they're still opening up some of their slots, which is really cool. And that's a major draw for ARPGs for me, is getting or finding a new weapon, a new ability, and then going to it on the hotkey or setting it into your own order. All of the hotkeys on all of the specials can be tailored to a particular key that you want that to be uh, appearing on. You know the deal, you start off with X and you don't want want to you know start moving that around you have a routine and the game respects that it's very very cool in that direction so some of the problems with games like this is what I call getting run off screen which means that if the other player doesn't really clock that you're on the edge of the screen and they start pulling away from an enemy the camera will leave you deserted you know and so you have to operate with that parameter that squared parameter screens area that you're given with some arpgs or some games of this structure visually would pan in and out and i'm quite surprised that the other analog stick doesn't offer an angle change or a pan in and pan out that would be really nice to be able to go and drill into some detail and look at all these really gruesome deaths and blood and stuff i think the animations on some of the dying and some of the gore is top notch I'm also quite impressed with the variation on environment and how sort of out of the box they've gone with making this game look pretty slick when it comes to venturing around the various dungeons and maps etc. So is the game worth getting single player? Is this game worth getting if, if yeah, you do have someone to play with but it's not going to be you know, a frequent thing? The answer is a resounding yes. The, this is going right up against Warhammer Inquisitor Marta and what I'll say about the two games is that both of them have a very strong single player experience. Marta's is slightly more applicable for me because of its 40k universe and because it's future weaponry, military aspects and amazing guns, grenades, explosions, machines, aliens, that sort of stuff. This is also applicable to me because I am a big fan of ARPGs, Pillars of Eternity, all that sort of stuff. I don't actually mind them. Some people find them a bit samey, you know, so if you're playing on a PC or that click in and just doing the same thing over and over again but if the scaling's right if the leveling up's right if the unlocks are interesting enough if the weapon upgrades are, are that changeable and that dramatic then it pulls you through because you're like I can't wait to rank up I can't wait to find out you know what move I'm going to have on this button and if there's some cool armor sets around the corner etc there's quite a lot of variation on the actual weapon type for the marine guy as well I managed to get a hammer for him which had huge stats and changed my sort of swing timing and everything it was very, very good. Now, one thing to watch out for is, so I did two sets of playthroughs. I did a playthrough from the beginning. We both went from the beginning, and then I did a playthrough with my high rank character, who's around 15, 16, I say high rank, 15, 16. Now, I thought that the loot would scale to both of us, but it and the enemy types, i.e., I don't know, there'd be some middle ground. I think we've been quite spoilt in this direction because Borderlands is so advanced at handling that loot scaling thing and allowing the other player to have a click drops when they're in a high rank it doesn't do any of that you if you bring someone low ranked into your high rank game they're screwed I'm serious they their hits won't affect any of the enemies and all of the loot drops would be a rank 17 you can see here that they couldn't pick up any of the drops because they were in a game that they were totally out of sync on that's you know to be expected so just bear in mind if you're going to play this game have a single player character that you muck about with and then have a co-op character that you're going to use so I'm going to close off here oh yeah by the way I did completely forgot Check this out. Marta's got Eldar in it now. I fired it up on the PC. It's been patched and these new races have been added. And you know who else has been added? Tyranids! Revel in Carnage Inquisitor. I think it's a single player experience I'd go for Marta, but for a co-op experience, this is hands down one of the strongest games on the system currently in the ARPG department. This and Diablo 3 
are top notch. I brought this pre-owned, okay? Bought it for 30 quid. It is a, Michael, is available physical, but I strongly suggest you have a look at it. But bear in mind, you have to be an ARPG fan, but I don't think it would disappoint at all. And it's great to see a new, awesome couch co-op book. Be down here! <laughs> Really old fashioned. I always think a guy should pick you up and pay for dinner and 99.9% .9 of bricklayers are men.